Today I'm going to try out this pressure transducer. It's made by Fluke. It's a PV500. I hadn't heard of that. I'd only heard of the 350s. So I thought I'd give it a go. I've connected it to a lead that came with my Hantec scope. And I got the scope. So I can go into here and connect it to my multimeter. And also I've screwed this adapter on the end. And that was out of this um, pressure kit that I got from Sealy. So now I can connect a short hose or a longer hose straight to it once it's in situ. I think I prefer that idea than trying to screw it in and put loads of coils and twist into this wire. The wire is quite long, but it's prefer screwing this in and then just connecting to it. So I'll go and try it out on the car. I've only used a homemade one before. So this one, I've got 0 0.5 PSI to 500 PSI. So I'm not sure if that means when I'm doing the pressure, it's not going to show me the vacuum that I want to see at the same time. Because I've got vacuum on another setting, 0 to 29 inches of mercury. So all I can do is try it and see how it's going to work out. I have to remember and take the valve out of the end of here. I almost forgot in my eagerness to try this out. So I just screw that in and then this can just clip onto it. I'll need two hands. That's it clipped on. You can see where it's been twisted on and off in the past, the way it's been. I, I got this second hand for £150, so I thought it was worth a go to see what it would be like. Now I'll just connect to the scope, and that will go on to this end here. And I've just got basic settings of metric is up and English is down. So metric is going to be... KPA in English is standard PSI and this just turn that to zero the line when you've connected it up you just check the battery on this by with it switched off you just go across the two pins and see that you have what did it say 100 millivolts or below you replace the battery that's inside here this one was still okay, the battery that came in it. So we'll go and get the scope and connect it up and see what the waveform looks like with this. The lead is long enough to sit inside the car because it's starting to rain outside. And I just don't want to get everything wet unnecessarily. So I got this box, looks like it should have a fish supper in it. But it's because I just bought this on its own. I didn't get a fancy case or anything, so I'll connect this up to the laptop and then show you what the waveform looks like. Okay, I'll wait for this to start. Okay, what, what I've got here is... What I've got here is this works at 1 PSI, is shown as 1 millivolt. And when we're down to that sort of level, we have a lot of uh, a messy signal when we get that small. So what I'm going to do is go into here and I don't need this there. I don't have anything saved with this. It's just um, I can turn channel B off. Right, don't need B on. It's only this one, so when this one is going to be really low, so if I take that right down, and hopefully it knows that I'm into like a which probe I'm in, yeah. So I got to take this down. 500 millivolts is going to be my sort of screen, and you see the lower you go, the messier the signal gets. 
I'm going to start the car. I'm just thinking of how much time I want. 20 milliseconds per division might be okay. I'll just start the car and see what happens. Of course, the car's misfiring because they've got that disconnected. We could change the time. Add more time. I might even be able to make the uh, plus or minus. I'm getting a lot of interference. Now with this one, I should be able to clean that up by filtering it, which I don't know how to do yet because I haven't haven't had to do it so far, but that doesn't look too good when I'm zoomed in that much. So there we have it, the Fluke PV500, which I don't know what the difference is to the 350, but it's fine. I see, I see a lot of a really thick line at the bottom, but I'm not seeing steps that I used to see with other pressure transducers. I really need to learn how to use this though to get a better signal. I need to try and filter it. Okay, I found something here by clicking on to the box itself where it says 200 millivolts right there and this thing came up and instead of choosing the probe I clicked DSP just to see what it was and I had the choice of adding um, a low pass filter and that's how it came out so that's actually my, that's much better it's me like I say I'm trying to get used to the tool and um, now's the time to do it before I need to use it on a car to speed up what I'm doing I'm happy with that so for the price I, I paid a hundred and fifty pounds for this and like I say, the cable, I got that from, it came with a Hantec set, so I could just clamp it right onto there, and it will go into the scope. I don't really need to figure out a channel, because I know the ratio is 1 millivolt for 1 PSI. So, it's easy to use, even though it says millivolts, I just think of it as PSI. And, and that's really much cleaner and I, I've got these rulers that I could put up. I don't have the waveform library. Not the waveform library. I don't mean that. I mean the waveform overlay that I had on my last laptop. So I, I could add that onto this because I think it'll help. But that, I'm happy with that so far. That's amazing compared to what I was doing with the homemade one. Um, oh yeah, and then I, I also bought that pressure kit, the Sealy one that I showed you earlier. Almost trapped the wire in the door. I, I do prefer that because I don't like the idea of um, putting coils of wire in here. I'm going to have to use two hands to disconnect it. That's what it looks like, just this part here without the attachment. So now I'm going to connect it all back up to how it was, because it is raining. So far I'm really impressed. For £150, that's what I was going to say. When it came, that was in America though. I got it in America on eBay. And it was posted over. And the guy was great that I bought it from. Posted it over. No problem at all with that. It was... The tax I had to pay another £50 when it came into the country, so it ended up being £200. But still, I, I think it's good for the money. And because I hadn't heard of a PV500, I thought I'd show, I'd test it, and if it's any good, I'd share it with you. I do need to check the vacuum side of it sometime. I'm sure it'll work okay. This came with a fuel line connector, so they've obviously used it on fuel. Anyway, I hope that's good. I don't usually do tool reviews. I thought I'd share that with you in case somebody's looking for a cheaper alternative. Thanks for watching.